Giganotosaurus, Tyrannosaurus, and Spinosaurus, three of this planet's most impressive carnivores, each perfectly adapted to their habitats and unmatched in their own niche. But would they still be unmatched if their environment changed? Well, that's what we're going to be exploring today. We'll be placing 100 males and females of each species into the planet of Avatar, otherwise known as Pandora. Will they conform to their new environments and become the next apex predators, or will they crumble under the pressure of this alien planet? Before we place our mega theropods on Pandora, we should probably first have a look at them, so we can actually understand what we're dealing with. First we have Tyrannosaurus rex, the largest land carnivore to ever exist. Weighing in at 10.5 tonnes, measuring 12.7 metres in length, and standing 4 metres tall at the hip. Its strengths are bone crushing jaws, incredible senses including sight and smell, and as well it has an incredible durability due to its very robust build. Next we have Giganotosaurus carolinii. This carcarodontosaur is slightly smaller than T-Rex with it being 12.7 metres in length, 9.1 tonnes in weight, and standing at around 6 metres at the hip. Giga's strengths slightly differ from T-Rex though, with it having huge slicing teeth made for bleeding out opponents instead of bone crushing power, but other than that difference they have pretty similar senses, just with Giga's being a little bit weaker. And moving on to our last mega theropod, we have Spinosaurus aegypticus. And although this guy technically isn't the third largest mega theropod anymore, since Tyrannosaurus macranesis now exists, I still wanted to add this guy instead of macranesis because that Tyrannosaur is basically just a T-Rex 2.0, and Spinosaurus is easily one of the most iconic dinosaurs to ever exist, so in my opinion it was a no-brainer to add it. On to Spino's stats though, it measures at 14.7 metres in length, 9.1 tonnes in weight, and it stands at just under 5 metres at the hip, when not counting the sail. On to its strengths, it had strong hooked claws and teeth, which was perfect for holding down slippery prey like fish. As well, Spinosaurus obviously has this huge sail. Although it is somewhat unknown what it's actually used for, this could definitely be an asset when trying to intimidate away other predators, which in my opinion is going to come quite in handy when on Pandora. The first thing to assess when seeing if these dinosaurs can survive Pandora is we have to look at the environment, and for this we'll be using the game Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. Within the lands of the western frontier we have three distinct areas to look at, the King Lar Forest, upper plains and clouded forest. But before we have a closer look at the environment, there's three differences that set Pandora and Earth apart, and we're going to have to answer them real quick otherwise this video won't really work. The first difference is the air on Pandora is pretty much toxic to any Earth organism. So for this we're just going to be saying the mega theropods were engineered to withstand the new type of air, because we don't really want our dinosaurs keeling over the second they step foot on the planet. The second difference is the gravity on Pandora. It's around 20% weaker, which is the main reason why natural life on this planet can get to such huge sizes, but how would this affect our dinosaurs? Well if anything this could actually make it easier for them, since there's less holding them down. So in theory this could make our dinosaurs much more agile, letting them move at terrifying speeds in their new environment. And the last and most important difference I'd say, is I'm not actually sure if their life is carbon based. For this video I'm going to assume they're carbon based because if they weren't that means all our dinosaurs would probably die due to eating toxic foods. Now that's out of the way we can have a look at our three biomes. Starting off with the King of the Forest. Like the name says this place is a vast forest covered in tropical flora and this would be a pretty great biome in my opinion for the T-Rex specifically because it gives plenty of areas to ambush and stalk prey. So in my opinion T-Rex would get a 10 out of 10 for the environment score. As well this biome is pretty perfect for Spinosaurus, since there's plenty of deep lakes and rivers, and as well there's even a sea to the southeast, perfect for Spinosaurus. So since this area is pretty much a Spinosaurus' daydream, it's also going to be getting a 10 out of 10. Giga on the other hand doesn't do too well, since its home within the Candeleros formation was very open and dry, which sadly is the opposite of the King of our Forest, with it being compact and humid. So in my opinion Giga probably wouldn't venture here too often, which lands it a score of 2 out of 10. The next environment is the Upper Plains. For T-Rex this is honestly just awful, since it's too open, so it can't set up any ambushes or even stalk prey without being seen, which lands it a 2 out of 10 just like Giga did in the King of Lore Forests. Spino actually does quite well, because the Plains has the largest lakes on the western frontier. So again another 10 out of 10. Giga does quite well in this environment, because it's open and vastly less humid than the forest, which could be somewhat similar to its home. 
so I'm going to give Giga an 8 out of 10, because although it is the best out of the bunch, it's not exactly perfect, with it having very rocky terrain, and it's not as dry as Giga would need. And finally, we have the Clouded Forest. For T-Rex, this has ups and downs. First of all, it's a jungle, and second of all, it's very misty, which in my opinion, creates perfect opportunities to stalk and ambush prey. But, it does have some problems. And first of all, it's incredibly hilly, which could be an issue for a 10 ton animal like T-Rex to manoeuvre. So I'll be awarding T-Rex a 9 out of 10, because although it's pretty much perfect, I could see some issues for large and adult T-Rexes. For Spinosaurus, this place is also slightly worse than its two other biomes, with it having the least amount of rivers and lakes. And although there is still a decent amount, sadly they are broken up with a lot of hills and mountains, so traversing between the rivers I could see a definite issue. So for Spino, I'd like to give it an 8 out of 10. And for Giga, it has the same issues that it had in the King of Law Forest, but except this place is even worse, with it being more humid and even more uneven to walk on. So Giga gets a 0 out of 10. So overall, on the environment score, how are our dinosaurs looking? Well, Spinosaurus at the top with a 9.3 rating, Next we have T-Rex which lands a 7 rating, and finally Giga gets the lowest rating with it only being a 4. Which may sound bleak for Giga I do admit, but if the planes do provide enough food for Giga overall, it might actually survive pretty well. Moving on, we're now going to take a look at our fauna. And for this, I've broken them into two different groups, with one group being the competition, and the other group being the prey animals. Starting off with our prey animals, we're going to look at our first tier which I've dubbed the Unreachable tier. These guys, if you couldn't tell from the name, are unreachable to our carnivores, due to them either being too fast, or in a completely different realm. Starting off, we have the fish-like aliens. This includes the buoy fish, octofin, mud crawler, and the rock beak. For all the dinosaurs but Spinosaurus, these would be unreachable, because Giganotosaurus and T-Rex aren't exactly known for being piscivores. Next, we have the flying ones, like the Coronus, the Great Western Tetrapaton, the regular Tetrapaton, and the Stingbat. These guys fly, so like I said earlier, they're pretty much in an entirely different realm, so I don't see much chance of our carnivores actually hunting them. And the last group of animals in this tier is what I've dubbed the Speedsters. These animals are the Hexapede, Arrow and Murder, and the Dire Horse. To put it bluntly, these dinosaurs have a better chance of developing sentience than they actually do catching these animals. Now moving on to our perfect tier, these animals, like the name says, are perfect food sources for our dinosaurs. First of all, there's the fish for our Spinosaurus. Since these are plentiful and all at decent sizes, they provide a decent meal for young and even fully grown individuals. Next is the Sturm Beast, and these guys would be amazing food for Gigas and T-Rexes, and this is mainly because their large size is somewhat perfect for hunting, and as well, since they roam in large herds, they wouldn't exactly be too hard to find. Next is the Bone Helm. And this is amazing for the T-Rex, since it's pretty much just a smaller and weaker Triceratops, which only weighs around 3-4 to four tons, so if T-Rex could take on 8 ton trikes, I'm pretty sure I'd have no issue bringing these guys down. Next would be the Challenging Tier. These animals could be brought down by our carnivores, but not without risking any injury. First we have the Sturm Beast for Spinosaurus. Although Spino is primarily a Piscivore, there is evidence shown in a pterosaur fossil that Spinosaur may have actually eaten some kinds of meat. So for Sturm Beast that's weaker in any shape or form came to the watering hole, I think Spinosaurus may be able to bring it down if it really wanted to. Next is the Bladehead, and for Giga, these guys could be a challenging foe, since they are strong enough to break through human mech suits, but still I think Giga could bring these down, due to it outsizing them by a decent amount. Moving on, we have the Hammerhead Titanophers, for T-Rex, these guys would definitely be challenging, but still possible, because if you remember correctly, back on Earth, during when T-Rex existed, their main food source, beside Edmontosaurs, was actually Ceratopsians, like Triceratops and Taurosaur, and although both aren't related, or really that similar, they still share the same niche, with them being slow, lumbering armoured beasts. So I think T-Rex may take the edge when fighting Titanophers, due to it having experience taking down similar prey. The only difference is they are slightly larger, with them weighing the same weight as T-Rex, instead of weighing slightly less, like the Trikes did. And the final animal here is the Sound Blast Colossus. These beasts are huge, and use wind to create deadly blasts to deafen their opponents. But against the Giga, I don't think these would actually be that useful, since the largest predator they deter is only around 400 kilos, 
so against a Foiger on 9 ton Giga, I'm pretty sure these attacks aren't going to be doing much. And since they're described as slow and lumbering beast, I think once the Giga gets past its Wind Blast, these guys are pretty much a free meal. And now we face the last tier of prey animals, and that's the unbeatable tier. These animals are single handedly some of the most dangerous animals on Pandora. And as well, I doubt there'd be any chance of our dinosaurs bringing one of these down without mortally wounding themselves in the process. First, we can go over the animals we've already talked about, like the Hammerhead, Sound Blast, and Bonehelm Rhino. For Spinosaurus, these guys are pretty much off limits, with them just being too large or too well defended. So these are pretty much just a no go. And the first of the two animals in this tier, which I haven't mentioned earlier, is the Sailfin Goliath. These animals are cousins of the Sound Blasts, albeit a fair bit larger, with them weighing around 30 tons. So I'm pretty sure a fully grown individual is 100% off limits to any carnivore, but if one was deceased on the ground, I'm pretty sure both T-Rex and Spino would try and grab a bite, and if a young individual was alone, I'm pretty sure T-Rex would be strong enough to take it down because in reality, all the Goliath really has to defend itself is its impressive size. And the other animal in this tier, which we haven't mentioned yet, is the Zachru. These guys are kaiju-sized elephants, covered in thick armour and stacking up at 100 tons in weight. And to make it even more dangerous, they have human levels of sentience, live in herds, and have a symbiotic relationship with the humanoid Navi. So these guys are easily off limits for Giga and Spino. So now we've finished the prey category, how are our scores looking? Well, again, Spinosaurus is at the top, but this time in joint place, with both Spino and T-Rex getting a perfect score of 10 out of 10. And who would have guessed Giga's at the bottom again, but this time with a slightly higher score, since it reaches a 7 out of 10. Because there's still a decent amount of food fit to prey on, but nowhere near as much as T-Rex and Spino have. Now that the prey category's finished, let's have a look at the competition. And first, we have the Nuisance tier. Basically, these aliens can't cause any issues for our dinosaurs other than possibly stealing food or maybe hunting young offspring. First, we have the flying animals, like the Mountain Banshee and the Storm Glider. Although both look quite intimidating, with the Banshee being the size of an Allosaurus and the Storm Glider being near the same size as a T-Rex, they're actually both deceptively weak, with one weighing 100 kilos and the other only weighing 300. And as well to factor into this weakness, both of them only hunt smaller prey, with storm gliders hunting banshees and other flying animals, and banshees only hunting flying animals and small hexapedes. So when faced with our giant theropods, I don't think they'd even be able to scratch them. One bite from even the likes of Spinosaurus, and I'm pretty sure these guys are dead. Next we have the small pack hunters, like the Viper Wolf and Echo Stalker. Although these guys are strong pack hunters and can bring down animals larger than themselves like the Stern Beast, sadly one bite from our Mega Theropods and it's game over already. Scarab Crawlers are another type of pack animal, but these guys would be even less of an issue, since these guys are scavengers, so they don't really have any speed to get away, and their only real defence is an armoured body, which may work against Viper Wolves and Thanatars, but against a Rex it could simply chomp through it, and against Spino, it could just flatten it by stepping on it. And the most unique animal in this tip, and sadly also probably the weakest, is the Chameleon Crawler. These animals are also pack hunt, but they rely on camouflage for ambushing their prey, which may sound somewhat good until you realise Spino spends most of its time in the water, so it's pretty much off the limits, and T-Rex has one of the best senses of smell in the animal kingdom, so seeing a crawler doesn't really matter because it can already smell exactly where they are. Next we have the problem tier, which means these animals could cause a legitimate problem to any mega theropod. First we have the apex predator of the forests, and that's the Thanator. These alien cats hunt the most dangerous of all animals in the western frontier, like the Titanophers and the Bonehelm. But you have to remember they only do so with surprise attacks, since they only weigh around 500 kilos, which although does make them deadly and fast, if T-Rex landed a single bite on this alien, I'm pretty sure every bone in its body is shattering. Another apex predator is the cloaked panther. These guys are basically just bigger and larger versions of the Thanator, as well as they hunt in groups. So although they are dangerous animals, Spinosaurus could simply just go in the giant lakes and hide, and Giganotosaurus could easily just end their lives with a single bite. And the final thing in this tier is the Navi. Although they are sapient and can craft weapons, they are regularly preyed upon by the Thanators, 
which leads them to often avoiding areas with predators in. So most likely, I think they'll see these dinosaurs as too dangerous, and will probably just leave them alone. But if forced into battle, they could bring one down, due to their superior numbers and ranged weaponry. Next we have the Stalemate tier, which is just for the Thanator and Spino. This tier basically means a fight between these two animals could go either way. So although the Thanator is a lot smaller than Spinosaurus, you gotta still remember it does bring down the Titanophers, which are more armoured and heavier than the Spino. But on the opposite end, Spinosaurus still has some impressive weaponry, with its claws and teeth. So in my opinion this could probably go either way, with either the Thanator getting a sneak attack and ending the fight with Spino in a couple of seconds, or with Spino possibly pushing it over with its incredible weight, maybe retreating back to the water, or it could go in for the finishing blow, pinning the Thanator to the ground with its claws and using its teeth to finish the fight. And the last tier we have is the Predator tier, which is a tier for animals that could easily predate on our dinosaurs. And in actuality, no animals are here, since our dinosaurs, in my opinion, are simply just too strong to be predated regularly. So overall, how are our dinosaur scores looking? Scoring the highest is T-Rex, with a rating of 8 out of 10, because pretty much nothing can actively hunt this titan. Then we have Giga with a rating of 8 out of 10 as well, because now it can pretty much rarely hunt it down. And Spinosaurus gets the lowest, with it still being a high score at 7 out of 10 though, because although there is some deadly threat like the Thanator, it can just go in the water and avoid all these issues. So now that we've seen all my scenarios, can we finally answer the question, and that is, can the big three survive Pandora? Well, yes, they can officially survive Pandora, since all of them got a total rating of above 5, with Spinal getting the highest at 9.1, T-Rex getting a close second at 8.3, and Giga falling slightly behind at 6.3. So I could easily imagine these mega theropods fitting in decently well. Spinosaurus could take up the niche they had on Earth, with them fishing in rivers and lakes, or maybe it could even inhabit some seas to the western frontier, becoming a fully aquatic animal. T-Rex I feel could get better at ambushing, with it possibly hunting in pairs, with one distracting the herd and the other sneaking up behind to get an attack, or possibly they could downsize, instead splitting into larger packs like Daspletosaurus, maybe having 7 individuals of around 3 tons each, focusing on faster prey like the Sturm Beast, Bone Helms and maybe even Dire Horses. And for the Giga, I could easily imagine it forming large roaming packs, hunting all the large game on the plains which could put it in direct conflict with the Navi, which would definitely affect their culture quite a bit, with the Giga being painted as evil monsters or possibly even demons in their stories and songs. But that's all we have time for today, so if you did enjoy the video, please leave a like and subscribe, it really helps the channel out, but other than that, I'll catch you later.